know how many of these phone applications that tell you the weather are actually accurate or not. For example, if we go to UAV forecast, it tells me today it's seven mile per hour wind. I don't have hair, so I don't know if you can tell, but there is a consistent wind blowing all the trees over there are blowing like crazy. Maybe you can see those trees right there. I don't think that's a seven mile per hour wind. Let me take this. There's a gust blowing right now. And with this off, you should hear the microphone being affected by the wind. So I'm guessing that the winds are somewhere between seven and 20 miles per hour. That's okay. The Mavic can handle that. And that's gonna be perfect for today's test. We are gonna be doing some return to home test with my new landing pad. My favorite part. Well, that didn't work. That's my favorite part, if you can't tell. I think this ground is soft enough. We can use the pegs. No, it's not. These pegs are freaking useless. This is every location I've been to, I cannot get these things into the ground and I never have a hammer with me. I don't know about you, do you carry a hammer in your back pocket? I sure as hell don't. That being said, we're just gonna set it on the ground. I don't know how often you guys use Return to Home, but we're gonna find out the accuracy on the Mavic Pro's Return to Home right after this. All right, we're doing a precision takeoff with the camera pointing down. That should raise to about 20 feet, give or take. Yep, 17 feet, close enough. And we're gonna do a little flying. All right, let's do a little return to home. And here it goes. It always freaks me out when it starts flying on its own, man, because I, I don't use the return to home. Landing. My old quad, I didn't trust it at all. So it's taken me some time to start to trust this one. This is leaving the camera in the exact same spot. And thanks to editing, when this lands, I'm gonna just sort of tweak it and show you what it was before it took off and when it landed. Look at it readjusting itself. Whoa, that's crazy. Not bad. I'd say that's within four inches of where it took off from. I'm impressed. All right, I've got this set up. We're gonna do precision takeoff. It's gonna raise up to 20 feet, or right under 20 feet. We're gonna start return to home with precision landing. And here it comes. If you notice, as windy as it is, the landing pad's staying right there. I'm not getting any lift, which I'm very surprised. I definitely give props on these landing pads. Well, that's quite a bit more off this time. Okay, that's with precision landing. That's sort of bizarre. So we'll play those back to back so you guys can see twice with precision landing on how it was different each time. Let's go ahead and try this again with precision landing off. This is with precision landing off. We're gonna go ahead and do auto takeoff without precisely recording the takeoff point. And when it does that, it only takes off to about four feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. We're gonna just fly it over there. And we're gonna go ahead and do the return to home. Wow, 
what the f That was without the precise landing, and it's almost exactly where it took off from. Whoa! Okay, let me try that again. All right, this is again without the precision landing takeoff. This is just a normal uh, takeoff. And let's try that return to home again. So it turns and faces towards us, comes right above us. And as it comes down, it starts to turn to the way it was when it was landed. Right now it's turning. And this is with high winds. What's the point of precision landing? It's not even as accurate as the non-precision landing. Let's, let's rewind and go back and do the precision landing one more time. And then we're gonna get rid of the landing pad and see if there's any difference. I wanna know what you think. Have you messed around with return to home? What kind of uh, outcomes have you had with, with regular return to home versus precision landing on return to home? All right, here we go again, precise takeoff. It's gonna fly up to 20 feet instead of four. From what I can tell, precision landing and regular landing on return to home and takeoff really doesn't make much of a difference. The uh, regular landing is so spot on with return to home that I don't know if there's a benefit that I'm missing to using precision landing. If you know something I'm not familiar with, leave it in the comments. I want to know. I want my other subscribers to know what the hell would we use precision landing for when regular landing works just as good. Fill me in. Let's try it without the landing pad now. All right, just like before, we're gonna start with precision landing, precision takeoff. Excuse me, this whole time I've been saying it wrong. It's uh, the precision takeoff. Record your takeoff point. Here we go. So we're at 17 feet. So it seems to be a pretty solid 17 feet every time it takes off. Go ahead and do the return to home. I said it again, I said precision landing. It's precision takeoff, and I don't know why I keep saying precision landing. You'd think it would be precision landing, but it's takeoff. So let's try it one more time. Goes up to 17 feet. And we're 18 feet, 18 feet this time. And here we go, let's see what it does this time. Let's try it without precision landing and seeing what happens there. Doing the uh, return to home right now with regular landing, which I guess is what it's always been. I've just been saying it wrong. It's actually precision takeoff, not precision landing. So here we go. Let's see how it does without the precise takeoff feature. Woo, for a second there, I thought I was gonna have to grab the camera and get it out of the way. I don't know what gives, but it's so much more accurate without the precise takeoff. Let's do this one more time. This is regular takeoff. And let's go ahead and bring it back. This tells me that precision takeoff is really an added feature that for whatever reason we don't need. Regular takeoff was actually more precise more of the time than precision takeoff. Why? I don't know. If you know, again, let me know in the comments. After looking at all this video myself and going through and editing everything, I can see that the precision takeoff and the regular takeoff 
really, the difference between the two is minuscule. It's, it's so minor that I don't necessarily see what the point of a precision takeoff actually is. I know it's supposed to record your surroundings. It's supposed to be a more precise landing, even though it's precision takeoff. But as you can see, not using it seems to be slightly ever so slightly closer than using it. One thing that I did notice is with the landing pad, the precision takeoff did seem to perform a little bit better than without it. I would love to hear more from you guys in the comments. If someone has some kind of end-all story that explains the difference between the two and why the hell it's actually better without precision takeoff, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. That being said, thank you guys for watching. Please click like. Share the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm working on more stuff all the time. I know I've been a little slow posting lately, but life's been getting in the way and I'm trying to get some time to set aside to film more things for you guys. If you're looking for a landing pad, I'm going to put a link in the description below for the one that I'm using through Litech.com. It's a solid landing pad and it does the job. Enjoy your week and I'll see you next time.